You know, we have got to stop meeting like this. Welcome back to the Scott Goes Pop channel on YouTube. My name's James Kelly and it's the 26th of April 2021. Just 10 days to go until the Scottish Parliament election. The election that could make or break this country's hopes of independence. And you might remember that a few months ago I promised you one last Scott Goes Pop poll before the election. And I am a man of my word. The poll has been conducted, I already have the results. We have Scottish Parliament voting intention numbers. We have Independence voting intention numbers. We have Westminster voting intention numbers. God knows why, but we do. And we have a whole series of supplementary questions of broad interest to the whole independence movement. But we're going to start right now with the Scottish Parliament numbers, or more specifically, the regional list numbers. I'm not gonna give you the whole poll at the moment, just the regional list numbers and you can come back later on to the blog to find out the full results, the constituency results and the all-important seats projection. So, on behalf of Scott Goes Pop, the polling company panel base interviewed a representative sample of 1,075 Scottish adults, including 16 and 17 year olds of course, between the 21st and the 26th of April, in other words between Wednesday and today. And here are the results, the Scottish Parliament regional list voting intentions. In first place, the Scottish National Party with 36% of the vote and that is unchanged from the last panel based poll which was commissioned earlier in the month by Believe in Scotland. In second place, the Conservative Party holding on to second place with 21% although that is down one on the last panel based poll. In third place, the Labour Party, still only in third place. Anna Sarwar is not making the progress he hoped. 18% of the vote, that is up one, but 18% is not enough to get the type of seat return that they got even the last time when they didn't do particularly well. In fourth place, the Green Party on 10% of the vote, that is up one. And that's another good result for the Green Party. And you might remember that in previous polls commissioned by or conducted by Servation, conducted by Comres, I've raised a question mark on some of the high green results because of the way the question is worded. But there's no problem with panel based polls. The question is totally fine as far as I'm concerned. So I wouldn't in any way uh, put any question mark over this high green result or some of the other polls as well. So there's now quite a consistent pattern of decent green results apart from in the Comres poll ironically. But um, yeah, so the Greens on 10%, that is up one. In joint fifth place, the Alipa Party, with 6% of the vote, that's unchanged on the last poll. And that is the third panel based poll in a row to have the Alipa Party on 6%, which is the level at which they can win a considerable number of seats. And of course other firms have not been showing such a high result for Alipa but consistently panel base are showing that the Alipa party are on course for seats. And in case anybody is wondering there was no sort of funny business in the, the way the question was asked. Alex Salmon's name was not mentioned. The Alipa party were presented in exactly the same way as every other party. So this is a robust result. It's just a question of which firm you believe. But that's what panel base are showing. And the other thing I should say actually is that Although I say Alipa are in joint fifth place, you can actually see in the raw numbers in the data sets that they are fractionally ahead of the sixth place party. So in a way they're in outright fifth place, but on the rounded numbers it's only joint fifth. Also in joint fifth place, or in sixth place in the, in the raw numbers, is the Liberal Democrats. Uh, so that's unchanged for them as well on 6%. And in seventh place, is the George Galloway party, All for Unity, the, uh, the list only anti-independence party with George Galloway as its uh, dubious figurehead. Uh, they're on 2% and that's again, that's unchanged on the previous poll. So although I'm not gonna give you the full seats projection until later, one thing I can tell you, and I think this will be of great interest, that just because of the way the other parties, apart from Alipa, have broken the, uh, the actual Seats projection for Alipa is better than any previous poll that we've seen in this campaign. Alipa are projected to be on eight seats. So, 
Find out the full results, the full seats projection and the constituency numbers later on today on Scott Goes Pop. And one thing I can tell you actually is that there is more movement, considerably more movement on the constituency vote than there is on the list vote. So some of the constituency numbers may surprise you in spite of what you've just heard. So see you later on Scott Goes Pop.